Welcome back to another segment of Tip Time, where we take a deep dive into your questions. Today, we do have a really good question from Trombone Al around how to ride and approach beach breaks when the waves are really, really short. Although the question was geared towards nose riding, we'll take a general overview of the overall approach and then also factor in the nose riding as well. Now, the fact of the matter is that surfing these waves can be really, really tricky and really difficult for a reason. We do need to have a few things down pat and be competent in a few key areas in order to make us more successful surfing in these sort of waves. I'll be trying to provide you as much value as possible to arm yourself with all the knowledge to be able to take on fast beach breaks as well as possible. So let's get into it. Okay, so in no particular order, the first thing that I did want to mention was two quick steps to the nose. Now, we know that when the conditions are really, really quick, uh, we know that we need to get to the nose uh, very quickly as well. One of the biggest barriers to getting to the nose quickly is having to utilize those four steps. Now, we can try and increase the pace of those four steps, but that itself is really, really hard as well. So something that I do advocate for in order to be able to get to the nose quickly is to be able to quickly step one, two to the nose, and these steps will have to be much bigger. Now, because a lot of this stuff is a bit, little bit more high level, we need to make sure that we're laying the foundations first. So I definitely wouldn't want you to do this before you get your four steps to the nose down pat nicely, but this is another progression that can allow you to surf in these conditions more comfortably. So for this, what we need to do firstly is get comfortable stepping two steps to the nose. The best way to do this firstly is land practice and then practicing it in easy conditions, so conditions where the waves aren't so quick and short, and then we progress this to our punchy beach breaks. For the land practice, the first thing that I'd like you to do is to get out a piece of wax and draw a big white line as to where you want your back foot to land when you're stepping to the nose. It's really important that you have this back foot of this position for the back foot marked out because this will actually allow you to visualize and observe where you want your back foot to land or where you'll essentially be jumping to. Um, if we don't have that, then it's too hard to know exactly where we're going to be landing and quite often we'll land too far forwards, too far backwards. Try it on land and see where you would ideally like your back foot to be when you're nose riding. From here, you can draw that line on your board and then you can start practicing your two steps to the nose. Again, we've done this before, practicing four steps to the nose, which is still a really useful method, but I find doing this on land for the two steps works really, really well also. We know that if we uh, put too much weight onto the front foot, that this isn't the ideal position to be hanging five. We want most of that weight to be on the back foot, so if you're able to make sure that you're just poking it forwards so that it's five toes over the nose, then you're doing your job there. Get a lot of repetition in on land of this because this will just make it transferring this through to the water so much easier, so it feels more natural and not like you're doing this for the first time out in the water. Now, your pop-up from the tail is going to be super important in these conditions as well. Firstly, we need to make sure that we can angle or turn from the tail as soon as we pop up quite often in these short punchy conditions uh, because the wave's not going to wait for us or allow us to kind of cruise through and just take our time. It's often going to be pitching up really, really quickly and we need to make a decision. Are we turning off the bottom straight away? Do we need to cut back? Everything like that. If we're popping up in the middle of the board, what this does is it takes us away from that pivot point of the surfboard. If we're away from that, then we try and turn. Quite often we don't have enough weight on the tail to allow that nose to lift, disengage the rail, and therefore we've got a lot of rail engaged in the water as we turn, which for the most part doesn't work. What we need to make sure we're doing instead is popping up at the tail. Again, land practice for this can be fantastic because we can practice the positioning, what it feels like, and then from uh, popping up quickly at the tail, transferring our weight onto the leading rail as we need to on the wave. And once we've practiced this plenty of times on land, again, practicing this in easier waves and then the more short punchy conditions is gonna be the progression there as well. We also need to be able to uh, dictate and change our position in the lineup really, really well. Three absolute key necessary things for this is making sure that our paddling is up to speed. So we need to make sure that we can paddle around the lineup. Um, if there is a bit of current, if there's a bit of drift, we need to know how to hold our position and be paddling enough and have that endurance to make sure we can do that. Your awareness of where you are in the lineup is also going to be really, really important. For this, I just like to pick a landmark. So if you've got a place on the beach that you can pick out, maybe it's a tall tree, maybe it's something else that you can make sure you're staying in front of and make sure, of course, that this area is where the waves are breaking so before you go out looking at where the waves are breaking is really good picking a landmark and then making sure that you stay nice and in front of that if you are getting drift
drifted away from that area, make sure that you're paddling back to that area. Now, this is mainly for if there's a spot in particular that the waves are breaking. Quite often with messy beach breaks, they're kind of breaking here, there and everywhere. So we need to make sure that we're able to paddle around and adjust our position. Don't play the waiting game. Make sure that we are looking for the waves and we're paddling left and right to put ourselves in the best position possible to be right under where the peak of the wave is breaking. And I think if you try and put those three things, so your paddling, your landmark, and then also not playing the waiting game, I think that'll be really, really good. Now in waves like this as well, I'd be really advocating for quick turns rather than your long engaged arcs. Now what this means is making sure that for our turns, we put a lot of weight onto the tail and we actually try and pivot rather than arc and carve. Now, this is just a suggestion. Of course, there's some really nice uh, sections in these conditions that pop up as well that might allow for a nice carving turn. But for the most part, in really short, punchy conditions, if you try and do a long arcing turn, what will happen is there's not going to actually be enough wave face for that arc to be drawn out. And so we're going to bog a rail, we're going to nosedive, we're going to just cut a little bit unstuck. So what we should do instead is make sure that we are disengaging a lot of the rail through our turns by placing a fair bit of weight onto the tail so we lift up the nose. The more that we lift up the nose and the more rail we take out of the water, we actually pivot on that point much more readily than we do if we keep that rail engaged where our arc or our turn is going to be longer. So that's a really, really good thing to consider as well. Very last thing here is actually gonna be the board design that I prefer in short punchy waves. So obviously this will uh, change quite a lot from your perfect point breaks where the waves are gonna be, you know, very predictable and you're gonna know where to put the board in the right sections. For your short punchy beach breaks, you do need all of the help that you can get. So what I like firstly here is a more heavily rocket board this will allow you to disengage more rail easier rather than if the board is very flat when the board is flat it's conducive to holding rail or keeping that rail in the water which again for a really predictable wave is fantastic because we can lean into the turn and put more power through it but for these uh, tricky conditions where the waves are quick and short we need to make sure we are doing quick and short turns as well to give us the most success with successfully completing those turns. The other thing that I would say is that erring on the, the lighter side of your long boards. So of course, for a high performance board, this is gonna be the case anyway, but if you're taking your log out, making sure that it is a little bit lighter, this will definitely help with your tricky conditions as well. Just with the fact that you're gonna be able to be a bit more reactive and turn the board a bit easier. With a heavy board, although they nose ride amazingly and I love heavy boards, um, in tricky conditions, if you're wanting a board that is uh, made for those conditions, it may not be the heaviest log. So um, you can just consider getting something a little bit lighter for those conditions as well. And I think that should help out your surfing. But again, each to their own there. Um, if you like a way a heavy board feels in all conditions, then absolutely go for that. Um, but it's just something to keep in mind as well. All right, guys, hopefully you found that pretty helpful. Again, it is a tricky scenario and situation learning to surf these short, punchy beach breaks. Take it one step at a time. Don't try and battle all of that in one session, but definitely they will be the steps and the things that I'd be thinking about working on to make yourselves feel a little bit more confident and comfortable riding short, punchy waves. It is extremely difficult to fit in all of the things that we would usually fit in that we can when the waves are nice and long and easy going and very predictable. Um, so yeah, give those a go and hopefully it allows you to have better sessions more often. Now we've got another episode of the Sunday Glide coming up uh, this Sunday. Um, big announcement for that one. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Really excited about that. Um, and of course, as usual, we've got another tip time coming up in a week's time. Other than that, hope you're all getting waves and we'll catch you on the next one. Yep.